Once upon a time, Alexander Emelianenko was among the heavyweight cream of the crop. Blistering speed. And what did Alexander do with us? Oh, here we go! Someone's got it! Right, it's over! The riot is already on the over! And it's over! Brutal chokes. He's got the choke. choke and, he gets it. and merciless ground and pound. He's unintelligibly defending himself! Oh my goodness. The younger Emelianenko had all it takes to dominate in MMA. Now, the most talented of the three brothers is a shadow of his former self, taking fights against YouTubers to entertain the local audience. So it would be nice to reminisce about the heyday of Russia's most scandalous son. As we now go to the six minute mark. The Emelianenko brothers grew up in the industrial city of Staryaskol, in a family of a welder and a teacher. At the age of seven, Alexander followed his older brother Fedor and started attending judo and sambo classes. The kindergarten was two or three neighborhoods away, so to get there faster I would carry him on my back and we would walk home. After completing the ninth grade, the younger Emelianenko went to a vocational college to become a cook, but only lasted a week due to misconduct. In 1999, he won the European Sambo Championship, while simultaneously getting involved in criminal activities, which would lead to his first prison term at the age of 18. The exact charges remain unknown to this day, but there are rumors that Alexander was convicted of banditry. According to various estimates, he spent three and a half years behind bars, until Fedor helped him get free in 2003. Upon leaving the penitentiary system, Emelianenko immediately began preparations for his MMA debut. Alexander joined the Russian top team, along with Fedor and another elite heavyweight, Sergei Kharitonov. By that time, the elder Emelianenko had already held the Pride Championship title and played a role in securing his brother's contract with the Japanese promotion. Entering the stage for the first time in the autumn of 2003, the 22-year-old Alexander showcased fast hands. Entertained the audience with signature Sambo techniques and ground and pound similar to his older brothers. He's got the choke and he gets it. In a span of eight months, he secured three wins in the professional circuit and won the Combat Sambo World Championships, gaining success in two sports shortly after being released. However, his alcohol addiction did not subside and Fedor had to frequently drag him out of dark places. Following three victories, the matchmakers offered Alexander a rendezvous with Mirko Krokop, who was a top five heavyweight in the world at the time. Oh, and regularly ventured into K1 to collect some scalps. Oh, Emelianenko's team believed that such a level of opposition was a step too far, but Alex was more than confident in his abilities. During the camp, he went on a drinking spree, which clearly had a detrimental effect. The pot-bellied Emelianenko brazenly lunged forward, trying to catch Mirko against the ropes. Meanwhile, Filipovic steadily attacked the body. Training stable. Alexander shows some. The patented high kick was just a matter of time. Yeah, but oh! there it is! The trademark oh! left oh! kick, and it's over! Just like that, Mirko Krokop defeats Emelianenko! Fedor watched the fight in the locker room, preparing for his own bout. He eloquently described what had happened. Stop! Also present was Coach Voronov, who mentioned his protege's lack of discipline. In the dressing room, Emelianenko still had little understanding of what had occurred, while Krokop's first move was to call his mother. Hello, Mama, yes, Mama. 
Getting back in the wind column back home, in the autumn of 2004, Alexander found himself in the Snow White ring once again. The counterpart was the newcomer, James Thompson. The Englishman was so pumped up, as if he had been waiting for hours for his turn in the restroom. Whoa, look at this. Don't get your city! From which a satisfied Emelianenko finally came out. Thus far. And here we go! And Thompson right away pulls into Emelianenko! Like a house on fire, and this is a slugfest! I told you! And Thompson is rocked by Emelianenko! And rocked big time! And it's over! And Thompson started off quickly! In a fleeting moment of chaos, the Russian delivered a batch of tranquilizers. This is a slugfest! and sealed the deal at the 11 second mark. Easy work for Alexander. The return took place six months later. Ricardo Marais was renowned for winning a truly old school, no holds barred Grand Prix from 95, where he finished off five opponents in a single night. Having apparently reserved a table at the pub, Emelianenko had no intention of being late. Hey, and what did Alexander do with us? Oh, here we go! The very first flurry cracked the Brazilian, and only subsequent strikes held him upright. Exactly in the same shooting range. Perfect. The whole affair took 15 seconds. What did Alexander do with us? Oh, here we go! At the end of 2005, Alexander appeared at the Bushido event in the Netherlands. Replacing his injured brother, he stepped into the main event spot against the European kickboxing champion, René Roos. Fired up by the Bruce Buffer wannabe, Alexander Emelianenko. he charged forward from the word go. <laughs> Alexander. Corralling the victim into the corner, Emelianenko let the sledgehammers fly. This time, Alex delighted the spectators for 28 seconds, thus needing less than a minute in total to dispatch his last three rivals. After redeeming himself in the eyes of Japanese promoters, at their New Year's event, the 24-year-old Alexander faced Olympic judo champion Pavel Nastula. Following the initial exchange, and agile, they now hook up. the pole decided to avoid stand-up altogether. Nastula snatched an armbar on the ground. And Nastula here along the ropes looking but did not expect to get kicked in the head in that position. Look at that. Done. Great job on countering. And look at the power break out of that oh my submission gosh. attempt. Wow, you talk about brute strength on the part of Emelianenko. Now just grabbing a Kimura. There you go. Working at it now. He's okay, he's okay, he's all right. Emelianenko scrambled back up and easily passed the guard. Fight all these fights, do all these fights in, in the... Firmly secured behind Nastula's back, he applied a lock across the jaw, forcing the judoka to tap. It's a, it's a little high though, he's got his chin in there. He's tapped, oh, he's, he's tapped! tapped. Oh he tapped God. out! Thus ended Alexander's second year in MMA. In a short span of time, the Russian scored eight wins. Suffering only one defeat against the peak Crow Cop. However, his bad habits remained steadfast, refusing to fade away. On the contrary, the easier the victories flowed, the longer he was absent from the gym. In May 2006, Emelianenko took part in Pride's most prestigious Grand Prix. In the round of 16, he faced the experienced Josh Barnett, the former UFC champion. A classy man putting on the belt. And catch wrestling's finest representative in MMA. Emelianenko took control of the center and let the hands go. See them. Alexander. Nice uppercut by Emelianenko. 
57 Torino in a Mercury Cyclone GT, so giving Jay Leno a run for his money there. Once the intoxicating spirits departed from his system, he began to fade and gradually lost the initiative. Delivered by a million ankle, but Barnett storms him with a knee of... Nice body shot again there by Barnett. The fresher Barnett executed a takedown. There's Barnett with the... Fired a couple of knees. Now raining down some... Left knees to and got the job done with an Americana. Again. The key lock and there it is. Americana, oh, he tapped! That's out. He tapped! I think Emelianenko suffered some kind of an injury. Later, Barnett would apply a Kimura on Mark Hunt. Kimura, it's and, over. It's That's and snatch a victory from Big Nog himself, but ultimately fell short against good old Mirko Krokop in the finals. So and he just oh, got no, him. Oh, no. Barnett. That's it. Meanwhile, Alexander resolved a conflict with his former teammate, Sergei Haritonov. Back in 2003, the brothers left for another gym without notifying anyone, which caused distress among their comrades. One of those dissatisfied parties was Haritonov, who had a 7-2 record in the promotion. He even challenged Fedor, but it was the younger brother who answered the call out. Emelianenko got going with boxing combinations. Nice right hand there by it. So if they do go to the ground, Haritonov adhered to bait and counter style, waiting for the right opportunity. Oh, staggered Emelianenko. Nice long punching from here. The grappling portion lacked action, so the referee stood the athletes back up. It's, it's a stalling card. If you're not doing enough action, they give you a stalling card. Drawing his man in, Emelianenko landed a right hand we now go to and gladly served an extra meal. And now oh! Haritonov challenges him and helped Emelianenko... Pouncing on the wounded prey, he showered Haritonov with knees, which was legal in pride. Oh, he's unintelligibly defending himself. Done. Oh, my goodness. More than 15 years have gone by, but the hatchet remains unburied to this day. In the spring of 2007, the UFC bought pride, and the Japanese league ceased to exist. Most top fighters transitioned to the American promotion, but the famous brothers weren't among them due to a failure to reach an agreement between the parties. Temporarily unemployed, Alexander embarked on a journey through various organizations. His first stop was Bodog Fight, which offered him Eric Pele, the King of the Cage champion, on a win streak of five. It's, it's all over. Pele only covering up. Can he fight out of it? Oh, oh he can! Let's go! Emelianenko always looks like. Emelianenko uncorked his quick combinations. And now Pele. And solid knees in the clinch. Right eye. Here comes the knee, then Emelianenko goes back up. Pele lets him come in. That's that knee again. Clearly having other plans for the evening, he did not let the Samoan off the hook. Resistance is coming from the Samoan boy. He really did get up the, the Samoan superstar. That right hand of the body hurt his ribs. Readjusting the mouth guard for maximum comfort, Emilianenko put a cherry on top. Round one. This is scheduled for three. Oh! Solid shot to the temple. Pele drops him. And it's over. Alex returned to home soil shortly after and applied a Kimura on the relatively unknown Jesse Gibson. Towards the end of the year, he went overseas where he was welcomed by Dan Babish. Despite the appearance of a circus strongman, the monstrous brawler was no punching dummy. Nice take nice. Down, Entering the bout on a run of six straight finishes. That's it. Championship fighting. Imagining his foe as a juicy burger, the giant expected to devour him swiftly. In many ways, we're going to want to try and get this fight to the ground as soon as possible. Emelianenko tamed the 330-pound adversary and the 1992 NCAA delivered a knee to the gut to favor Emelianenko and put on the squeeze. Oh, he might have him. Oh, he got him. Unbelievable. Alexander Emelianenko! Time on the counter, suspicious, 69 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Emelianenko! In the late 2000s, the 28-year-old Alexander became the biggest star in Russian MMA. He dispatched relatively unknown journeymen. Oh, nice the knees knee. and the hands! Santos in serious trouble! Alexander Emelianenko letting his hands go! 
Oh, he's in big trouble now. Up. Is finished. And maintained excellent speed for a heavyweight. To do damage. He's trying to push him with his punches, but Emilianenko too much for him, and that's it. In the same timeline, Emilianenko Jr. found himself increasingly involved in public scandals. He would appear drunk, even at his own seminars. <laughs> In 2010, Alexander faced experienced K-1 veteran Peter Graham. The Russian expected another cakewalk. And was unpleasantly surprised when Graham refused to go down easy. And during the initial assault, the Australian striker unleashed his notorious leg kicks. And when Alex fell for the fourth time, there was no point in continuing. With his eight-fight winning streak broken, Alex returned to the leading Russian promotion, M1. On the other side of the ring stood the former boxer, Magomed Malikov, a relative novice, one year into his MMA career. It was all over before it even started. An overhand landed right on the chin, and the subsequent onslaught destroyed any hopes of a comeback. Emelianenko had no intention of admitting defeat. By this moment, Alexander's presence in bars had evidently surpassed his time spent in the gym. His talent still allowed him to achieve victories against less prominent opposition. Returning from the monastery in 2013, he got rid of Bob Sapp, who worked part-time wherever they paid. It was also the last time we would see Fedor and Alex together. The turning point in their careers and relationship would be in 2014. Emilianenko Jr. offered zero resistance to the young Dmitry Sosnovsky. And soon found himself locked up again, accused of raping a woman while intoxicated. This incident would be the last straw for Fedor, and he completely disassociated himself from his brother, saying he is dead to me. After being released on parole a couple of years later, Alexander would come back to the sport, fully transforming into a homegrown hero, whose main mission is to beat up on foreigners. And now, even bloggers to amuse the local crowd. His alcohol addiction didn't go anywhere. It's worth noting that he continues to rise from the ashes time and time again. But with each new setback, the abyss of his downfall grows deeper. Also worth mentioning is Ivan Emelianenko, the youngest of the three brothers. He also achieved success in Sambo, but chose not to pursue a professional career. When asked who was the more talented among the brothers, Ivan confidently answers, Alexander was undoubtedly more gifted, by far. Fedor busted his ass off after the army service and started showing results. At 17, Alexander would be nowhere to be found in the training room, then go on to effortlessly win the Russian championship, and then conquer the European Cup as well, again without much preparation. Didn't he train at all? He made a brief appearance to the gym a week before the tournament just to say hello, and then dismantled everyone like it was nothing. Unbelievable. During the golden years of pride, Alexander Emelianenko cemented himself as an integral part of the promotion. And what did Alexander do with us? Oh, here we go! No lack of discipline or abundance of bad habits could stop him from impressing the fans with a cold-blooded gaze and innate speed. I told you! And Thompson is rocked by Emelianenko! And rocked big time! Alexander might have only displayed tiny fragments of his talent, but it was enough to build a career full of memorable highlights. We now go to the six-minute mark, and now oh. Hera Tanov challenges him and has Millionenko in the low. He's unintelligibly defending himself. Done. Oh my goodness. Брат с братом, как они могут работать? Я думаю, они будут бороться по правилам спортивного самбо. Вот, собственно, и все. Другого исхода в данном случае быть не могло.